hello, 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 hello. Hey, hello. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. So I am out here. I wanted to say hello and I wanted to chat a little bit. I have to say that um, the last four days going live with Tika was so inspiring to me and so joyful to me that I am, um, yeah, I'm dealing with withdrawal symptoms. So I've decided to come live to do a little quick, quick chat <laughs> and um, just to sort of pick up and tease up some of the stuff from this week that I had shared with Tika. So I don't know if I am coming through really dark or light or what. Um, if you're watching, give me a hello. Let me know you're here and just, um, yeah, join me. Feel free to join me. So yeah, earlier this week, I should say four days this week, I went live with Tika and it was so much fun. And we were talking uh, Return to Ghana Summit and we're talking, um, speaking with different guests and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, as I reflected yesterday and certainly as I went to bed last night, what occurred to me was that I really, really love it. I love it the opportunity to be part of something so special. And my spirit really guided me to continue to be out here to offer some tips and, um, you know, to tease up the interviews. So I want to do that today. And real quick, I want to share an insight that came to me. And now we know from psychology that when kids are forcibly removed from their homes or even separated from parents and their family of origin. How terrible the trauma, right? And the, 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 the negative impact it has on that child and their acting out and their behavior and all of that. So we know that to be the case. And as a people, I know Black History Month is over, but I'm talking now from the place of, um, you know, as a culture, right? Black History Month may be over, but I'm celebrating this all year. As a people, we have been forcibly removed from our home. We didn't just get separated. We didn't choose it. We were forcibly removed from our community, from our parents, from our people, from our land. And we were taken to a whole new land. And so it should come as no surprise when we look at pathology, the sadness of what's occurred to us. Somebody was just saying hey to me on my text. When we look at the sadness of what has occurred to us, right, it should come as no surprise that we are still acting out. And we see that in all kinds of ways, in the trauma and the many different pathologies that are, are present in our lives today. And so, returning to Ghana, we're looking to go. Hey, Tika is saying something. Um, I'm, I wish I could respond to her right now. Um, yeah, so returning to Ghana, whether we're going there to visit or we're going there to relocate, it's an opportunity for us to heal some of the things or some of the trauma, some of the challenges. Sorry, guys. Um, Tika is sending me a text. Yeah, some of the challenges that we faced over the last 400 years. Yeah, 400 years. Um, and, you know, so much of what we've experienced has come to us, not just through our own stuff, right? It, it, it's not our stuff. Hey, Tika, are you here? Hey, <laughs> yeah, so I, I just got on, Tika. I'm so glad you're able to be here. Um, you want to come and join? Mm. You want to come on? I'm going to bring you on. Add. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, so good to have you. Are you able to come on? I'm adding you. 
<laughs> it says you're being added. Hi, Rob. How are you? Thanks for joining us. It says you're being added, Tika, but um, it's still adding. Like it, it takes maybe it takes a little while to process you. Because I haven't done this before, so I'm not sure how it works. Hey, Suzette, how are you? Feel free to come on in and, and join us. We're just talking here. Um, Tika, it looks like Tika, it looks like you're being added. Um. And I wish I could say how it all works. Are you on, Tika? It, it probably will add you in just a second. So just, just bear with us um, as it adds you. What does it say? No answer. Oh, it says no answer. Okay. All right. So maybe you can't go live, Tika. I don't know. You, you, um... If you're able to come on live, feel free to do so. If not, that's okay. So yeah, I was just here talking a little bit about the fact that we know from psychology that when kids are separated from their parents, right? They and 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 you know, they're they're made to live in different environments perhaps that they didn't choose. At some point we see acting out behaviors. And they may grow up troubled and traumatized unless they get an opportunity to heal. And what was laid on my heart is that our community, yes, the African-American community in the diaspora is no different. We, 400 years ago, uh, you know, at the first recorded history, were forcibly removed from our parents, our, our community, all that was familiar and brought to the Americas where you know, all of it was unfamiliar and we're still trying to figure it out and to forge territory. And so it is no, it should come as no surprise that the acting out is as a result of all that trauma. And so if we are able to heal, if we're able to make the journey to where we actually came from, if we're able to recognize who we are, because I will tell you truthfully that for me, I write up to this point, I did not have a reference point for royalty because I didn't see it reflected in how I, who I, what I look like. And now I have a better sense of it because I recognize that there is royalty that looks like me in, on the continent of Africa. And there is all of that that is part of our legacy. So I'm really, truly grateful for that. And I look forward to that. And I feel that this opportunity to return to Ghana in this 400 year of return will be extraordinarily healing for people who choose to make the journey. And there are some people who are going like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at exploring it as a travel destination to, to check it out to see where my people may have come from. Looks like Tika is saying something. Hey, Rona, how are you? Feel free to come on in and join us. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I, it is my sense that, you know, being able to make that journey, make that trip to Ghana will be extraordinarily healing. I had the opportunity to visit Kenya several years ago, um, five years now in a bit. And it was so, so inspiring to me that I felt like my ancestors were so happy. Hey, how are you? Good to see you, my cuz. Come join us if you wish and, and share your insights. You know, and I remember going to Kenya five and a half years ago. And the feeling was so, so awesome to be on the ground there. I felt like my ancestors were happy with me that I took the time to actually be present on the ground in Kenya. And I spent 10 days on safari. And when it was time to go, I cried because I felt so like, oh my God, I felt so at home. I felt so comforted. I felt so happy that I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay there. So anyhow, so that's my story of going to Kenya. So I can't even wait. I'm so thrilled 
I'm so excited. I can't even wait to touch Ghana because being born in Jamaica, I know we're told that we come from. That's our roots. That's where we're from, right? And some people may or may not think that that's where we're from, but that's besides the point. That's what we think. And because we think so, you know, we see similarities, right? In all kinds of, some, some of it is in the language, twee. Some of it is in some of our customs. And as I'm talking about customs, Tika did a brilliant interview with this woman, Emma, who is an image consultant. And she talked to her about the customs of, uh, of Ghanaians. And one of the things that I really liked about Emma is that she had the opportunity to live in five countries in West Africa. She talked about having lived in, uh, in Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and I believe, what's the other one? Um, in Nigeria as well. And she said that of the nations that she's lived in, she said Ghana is the most peaceful, which I thought was really, really awesome uh, to know that Ghana is a peaceful place. Because you, I, I certainly uh, feel safe going, knowing that I'm going to a peaceful place. Um, she also talked about them as being very respectful people, that they are, in the way they speak, they're well-mannered and polite, and they tend to favor, you know, their language. They, they tend to put in their, spice their language with um, something about please. What, what is the terminology they would use there? I beg you, please. I beg you, please. So they're they're very well mannered and they expect politeness as they res they expect people to respect them as well um it's an old culture and as a result there are certain ways that are still very dominant she says that when you're greeting elders you want to greet them with your right hand not your left hand and as she was talking about that i had a just sort of a recollection hey Oh, that's okay, Tika. Do you are you able to are you able to come on? Do you want to come on still? You able to do it? Yeah, I know you're saying you sorry you stepped away. Feel free if you want to join me. Just let me know, and I can uh, tend to add, I can uh, try to add you again. Um, what? So I was sharing about uh, your interview with Emma that um, I loved how she talked about, okay, sure, yeah, feel free to, to log on, Tika. Um, there was something about what she had said. Now I'm going to have to go back to it. Yeah, how she talked about elders and greeting them. Oh, your computer. Yeah, sure. Um, you do your thing and uh, let me know when you're on and I will um, I will add you. And while you're doing that, I'm going to continue by saying, yeah, I really uh, liked how she talked about, you know, how it's very specific. You don't greet with your left hand. It's always with your right. Right. It's very clear that that is a tradition that must be followed. And um, it reminded me of living in South Korea. Right. Because I have that as a reference point. Having lived in Korea for three and a half years, almost four years, um, it's an old culture, over 5,000 years old. And there are very specific traditions that are followed in terms of the way people greet. And the way you greet your elders is with a bow. And it's a specific way that you bow, right? And... When I was thinking about what I heard in terms of Ghana and Ghanaian traditions and greeting elders, it reminded me of Korean culture. And there are many people who will tell you when you meet and you've been in Korea and if you've been to Africa, that some of the uh, traditions are very similar. A lot of people don't realize it. If you know Korean culture and you know African culture, You've, you've come to realize that the two cultures have quite a bit in common. And greeting elders is one of those, right? There are certain things that need to be done in a certain way. And greeting elders happens to be one of them. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to see if I can add you, Tika. 
Thank you so much for your love. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, because you see, um, a lot of times people, they get, they get all, uh, what can I say, territorial about culture and they don't recognize that there are similarities in some of those old cultures. African culture is an old culture and that is also true for Korean culture. And when you bring the two together, you, you know, greeting with your right hand, shaking your right hand and bowing in a certain way happen to be one of those things. So the greetings, even though they're a little different, they have to be done in a similar way. Um, they have to be done, I should say, a certain way in order for it to work. Um, I thought that that was remarkable. One of the other things that gave me a point of reference was when Emma talked about if they feel that you're cheating them, right? If they feel violated, they'll be offended. So she said, she talked about them as being very spiritual people. And she said, if they feel that you've offended them, or I'm sorry, if they feel that you've cheated them, they'll be offended. Hi, how are you, Needham? Okay, perfect, Tika, I'm going to add you. Um, let, me see. let me try. Bring Tika on. Sorry, guys, I just came close to bring Tika on. I'm adding you now, Tika. You should be added shortly. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, you will join me here. So I'm not left all alone out here in Facebook land. I can do it. Hi. Hi there. I had to get myself out. I didn't realize you were going on live. So I just said, okay. And you know, it's interesting because I was thinking about it earlier that maybe I should jump on live. Give me a second. <laughs> I love, I love the hand wrap, beautiful. Thank you. Hey, Adam, how are you? <laughs> good, good. So you're on, you have, you're on your page. Have you shared um, on the Return to Ghana page as well? You should probably share it there so that people who are in there maybe can uh, follow the combo. Do you want to do that or yeah. do you want me to send it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that, Tika. You know how to do that. You do yeah, it. Mm -hmm. I'll just share Hi, everyone. I'm just Ooh. popping on as Lorna's guest. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get all excited because you just joined me. Like, I don't know what to do with myself now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me share it. And then um, let's see what we get from here. I think I can share it directly from my page. Uh, how do I do that? Share. Hey, good to see you, Needham. Thanks for being here. You know, I think it only allows you to here, Rona. It only mm -hmm. you to come. Okay, here I can. It only allows uh, us to do it on mobile. I think to share it. Okay, here it is. I can share it to the other page. So yeah. I'll I'll, set, I'll do the sharing, and then you go on and uh, do your chat. So you're talking yeah, about me, Emma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking about Emma because I am um, that particular interview really reached me, you know, in a way that um, I feel that for people who are visiting, it's so good. It's so, so good to, yeah. to have some of this information yes. because we could easily take it for granted that, well, we're from Jamaica. So if we're from Jamaica and they're Ghanaians, then we know what's up. Right? Yeah. Or, or any, any other island or even the UK, right? Because it's, it, I guess it's... Or, or any place else, right? It's easy to assume that we know mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. But as I've come to realize, Ghanaian culture is part of African culture. It's it's an older, it's an old culture. Yeah. With a lot of tradition. Would yeah. you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. With a lot of tradition. And it's so important for us to respect and yeah. to actually know what we're supposed to respect. Yes, I'm I thought to, that was the key. I'm just sharing, okay? So it's not. It's, I'm not oh, even... that's fine. That's fine. I I know how it is because I was doing that last the last couple of days with you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, well, you know what's funny because I, uh, not funny, but it's interesting because I was just watching a video with my husband. Uh, there's a lady, I think I posted one of her videos in the Return to Ghana page. Um, oh, what's her, I can't, I can't remember the, the, her name right now, but she has a really amazing page. And she said she had five reasons, five things you need to do before you move, decide to move to Ghana. And one of the things that she said is you have to be willing to embrace or at least be willing to respect the culture because Ghanaians will not tolerate disrespecting their culture, right? So it, huh. it, it's one of those things that is so important that you're aware of uh, when you're going in there. And most people, for the most part, you know, are pretty respectful of other cultures. But if you're somebody who's not tolerant, um, if you yeah. don't necessarily um, see, if you see yourself as, oh, another thing she said was, you know, you can't feel, you can't go there with entitlement or feeling that you're entitled, like the Ghanaians owe you anything because, you know, that could come across very, it could come across very negative, right? Although the yeah. Ghanaians will embrace you and, sh and, and, and love you and, and be kind to you they're not going to tolerate you completely disrespecting their culture so i'm going to actually share that yeah. one it actually just came out a few hours ago i'm going to share that one in the group as well because i thought it was very it was on point right that's um, cool as, especially as it relates to the cultural piece because emma talks about that in her um in her discussion with us as well agree and somebody here needham joined us and he said that's so true yeah, yeah. so he's agreeing with that yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for your witness there, Needham. Yeah. Um, I think for myself, um, yeah. Tika, because I had the, you know, I had the blessing of having lived overseas, right? Yes. Um, moving from Canada, moving from Jamaica to Canada, and then moving from Canada to South Korea, which is like a world, almost the opposite, right? In terms yeah. of cultural expectations. Yes. I do have a sense of an old culture. Yes. Uh, what it's like that you can't go in there and just um, and not take the time to understand about it before you go. That's right. Um, and I feel like that's going to be important for us, even though we may look the same in mm -hmm. terms of our melanin and we might think we know mm -hmm. that it's important for us to take the time to to at least get to know a little bit about the culture because as the, the fact that we were separated from our motherland mm -hmm. 400 years ago forcibly removed we don't we don't have a lot of the discipline that if we had stayed home yeah part right, of we yeah. would have had yeah and i was also sharing that um the the fact that we know that psychologically children are traumatized when they're separated from their parents, regardless of what age, yes, right, yeah, and especially when they're forcibly removed, yes, that's deep trauma and huge trauma. Mm -hmm. And we see acting out and bad behavior on all kinds of levels, mm -hmm. and we never question, you know, why that is because we know that that young person needs help and that we need to bring them you know, to therapy and we need to do all kinds of things to help them heal. Yeah. And so what spirit laid on my heart is that this um, return to Ghana, this 400 years coming up in July mm -hmm. will be actually a helpful way for us to begin that healing process yeah. because as a community, that is something that we are uh, in need of. Hey, I Debbie, totally thanks I totally for joining us. What do you have to say about that? I totally agree. Hey, I noticed some uh, one of my friends. Hi, Debbie. Are you? It, thanks for joining. Hey, Debbie, thanks for your love. I totally, <laughs> totally agree with that, and I, I, I think um, there's more to come. There's more to come in the sense that it's, there's still a, a, a wide segment of our diaspora and population that may not be aware that you know these activities are happening. Not necessarily the summit, but the whole. Um, conversation about returning to Africa, period, not just Ghana, 
um, and and why why it's significant, right? Because a lot of mm -hmm. there's a, and I don't know you're in Florida, so you understand to to an extent what's happening in the United States in terms of race relations and um, issues um, with the the African American population. But I also think mm -hmm. um, in, a, in in addition to some of the negative things that may have maybe um, inspiring people to move, I think also because there's just been so much. Uh, access to information that people are actually getting a glimpse, just a tiny glimpse of what Africa really is. It's not starving children of flies flying around their heads, right? It's not. Well, tell us about it, Nick Tika, because yeah. you've been, and I yeah. think uh, you, yeah. you've seen I, Ghana too. I've seen Ghana my first hand, and um, you know, I, coming from Jamaica. Like I, I, I actually mentioned, I did a talk to a bunch of young people actually a couple months ago where I said, you know, most of what we see in the media, especially in North America mm -hmm. and maybe in the UK, wherever it's not, you know, not predominantly uh, black, um, is not positive. Most of what we see about Africa is not positive, right? And it, mm -hmm. it, it comes across as though Africa is always, it, every part of Africa is struggling, is suffering. Um, it's filled with things that are bad, like Ebola, AIDS, you know, anything that's mm. negative shows up in the media. But the very mm. rarely do you see the success stories about people who are like, they, there's entrepreneurs on the ground who are, uh, you know, who, who are Africans who are building, you know, multi-million dollar companies who are creating um, solutions within their economies. There are people who are doing great work, uh, humanitarian work, uh, you know, mm. and, and, and there are nations like Ghana that are actually transforming themselves with the help, not even help, but the support, uh, a strategic partnerships that they've been able to create with other nations. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. They've been able to create infrastructure and to, um, you know, develop their economy in such a way that they can speak of it in the way that they do now, right? It is an mm. um, economy. Yes, there are challenges. There's, you know, for the, for instance, the CD has been on decline, but at the same time, you know, they have uh, their finance minister saying, you know what, that's temporary. You know, we, there's going to be a correction. They're going through a phase of growth. So naturally with that, there's going to be some, you know, there may be some drastic turns in the economy, but it's not as though they don't have a clear position as to where they want to go. They have a clear vision. And as you know, right, everything that is, is um, anywhere that we're looking, anytime that you want to grow, in order for you to get there, you have to have not only a crystal clear vision, you have to have strong leadership. You have to have Absolutely. leadership. And I know that in, in Africa, you know, unfortunately, uh, at least from my experience, what I understand is that leadership has been a, a challenge. Uh, there's been deficiencies in, in leadership, uh, you know, mm. and, and, and I mean, I, I, when we talk about Africa, it's so complex. It's so complex. There's not one particular, we can't necessarily point to one particular uh, situation that could have resulted in, uh, you know, or may have resulted in our decline. There's a whole, it's like a, a, mm. a soup of unfortunate circumstances but yeah. it, what 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 we are at now is we're at a point in time where we do have the ability to have impact if we choose to and we do have the ability yeah. to uh to rise up with leaders our you know as ourselves uh, you know um as leaders um with politicians who we influence to get into politics um yeah. we have the ability to 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 do that we have the ability to to change how things are going right so that's sure. why it's so important wherever we can we stand loud and we and we we tell everybody about africa and that's why for me after i visited ghana for the first time i was like yes this is something that everybody who is of African descent should experience at least once in their lifetime. Maybe moving to Ghana isn't for you, but you can surely yeah. visit, right? You can surely yeah. visit. You can visit all of the other African countries. You can go to Nigeria. You can go to Togo next door. You could go to Benin. You could go to South Africa. You could go to Egypt. There are so many places. There are 54 nations in Africa. It's a huge continent. So, you know, the fact that most of us have never even seen it, you know, and we're, we're in 2019, it's, it, it says a lot, right? So, I, you Absolutely. know, I feel like I'm like the Ghanaian tourism board. 
the ambassador. The way that I promote, you know, but it's it's because I love the country and I love the people and I, you know, and I love being who I am. I, I, like, I love um, being of African descent and not to suggest that, you know, being Canadian is great and I'm so, I'm so grateful for the privileges that I've been afforded to be a Canadian and to be a yeah. Jamaican, a native Jamaican. Like, I feel like I've yeah. got the best of, you know, all worlds. Um, however, Absolutely. for me, you know, when I experienced Africa, that was like, th that's not a feeling that I can explain. I, it's just something you have to experience it for yourself. You have to experience it. For I feel the same way. And I love your passion. This is where you get really show you know your love of africa right mm -hmm. yeah. and your and, and your and all also all of your research and your experiences so thank you for that no, that you. is tremendous yeah i'm i'm sad that the summit was so short but <laughs> i mean I've oh been... no it's not it's not short at all and we could continue for a little bit needham thank you so much i understand needham says i'm sorry i can't stay a little longer mm -hmm. i'm at work tune in next time of course we're going to have a next time so that you can tune in thank you so much for joining us needham um, me, oh sorry lorna i was going to yes, if um because i noticed in our group the return to ghana group there's some people who are still joining our group or sorry i call it cool. our page, our page. So if you have just joined the page, uh, just to let you know, the summit has concluded as of the 28th. However, if you still want to access the recordings, you can still go to the page. It, it's, it has not closed. You can still go to the page and sign up to access the recordings. Uh, you know, Lauren and I will figure out, how, you know, our go forward strategy in terms of how we disseminate the information. But we really want this to be an opportunity for you to learn as much as you possibly can. I got some really good feedback, Lorna, about <clears throat> some of the interviews from a couple of people in my network to say, you know what, uh, like for one, Pearl's, Pearl's uh, session was really, they really enjoyed Pearl um, as well wow. as Emma, uh, you know, and most, and all of the speakers did a great, uh, a great job in terms of sharing their experiences. So it's, it's, it's being well received. And I still think it's, you know, people are still just getting into the motions of, you know, figuring out how to access stuff and then actually accessing it. So we may see mm -hmm. more feedback coming. Um, but yeah, I invite, yeah. I still invite you all, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if this is new to you, you're like, what Ghana is an option. I want to learn more. Let us know, drop your questions in the, in the page. Send either Lorna or myself a question. We'll compile it all together in FAQs for you at some point once we, we get, you know, um, as much information as we can share and we'll disseminate that because we want you to be well equipped if that's what you decide that you want to do. Yeah. Absolutely. So great to have you on here, Tika. And let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it because like you said, a lot of times, People, they, they'll find out about things after the fact. Some of us are late adopters. Some people are early adopters. They'll see something and they'll be jumping on it. Yes. But a lot of us are late adopters. I, I'm actually, I tend to be in that group sometimes. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I know that sometimes, even after something wraps, I may just be getting in the motion yeah. to get started with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And based on that, we, you know, we, it, it's like, we kind of, it's like we're just starting. It feels like that yeah. for me too, right? Yeah. The energy was such that um, I kind of felt like, oh my God, I was in withdrawal today yeah. when I didn't have to get dressed to, <laughs> to, to get ready for that. Yeah. I love the excitement of it. Right. And uh, um, it really did something for me, really special. So I trust that we'll keep this going. And um, today's Friday, so maybe we'll meet again on Monday. Yeah, just let and me talk about that. another interview. It will give me a couple days to sort out which interview, and then we'll tease it up. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Thank you. And you're looking just so beautiful. I love that look on you, Tika. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're so yeah, welcome. I, love you a lot. How is, how, huh? how, like said, so likewise, how is the sun in Florida? Is it nice? Is, you have, is it a nice day today? Oh my God, it was so hot. It was like blazing today, Tika, really blazing. Wow. What, what's up in your world? What's up in, in Toronto? It's still cold. It's still cold, but we don't have any blizzards or snowstorms. So that's... You know, well, that's give thanks, no blizzards and snowstorms. Did you have some sun today? Was there any sun? A, a bit, yeah. A bit came in, yeah. A so. bit, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to CJ, my son, um, 
And I think he was traveling from Windsor mm -hmm. um, from the early morning. So I didn't know if he had gotten any sun, but he said he was walking. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's not too bad. Not too bad. He no. drove back from Windsor and was walking. So, mm. But thank you for for having me pop in. I'm I'm glad that I actually came. I, I was I'm trying to get myself more uh, engaged in live di live discussion. I want to be on a little bit more. So whenever you're on, if you see me on, or if you're on, just just pop on and and chit chat. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna let you know when I'm gonna go, and then we can be on together because I really love your energy and the opportunity to be on together. It's fantastic. Thank you, Tika. Likewise. Take care. Love you. Love you. Have a great weekend. <laughs> All right. Take Thank care. you, everyone. Thank Thanks you so much for being with us. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Ciao. Bye now.